Mary Fields, born sometime in 1832, died on the 5th of December 1914. Better known as Stagecoach Mary, Mary Fields was born a slave in Hickman County, Tennessee. She grew up on a cotton plantation owned by Supreme Court Judge Edmund Dunn. As a young girl, Mary outgrew the boys her age, and at 18 years old, she struck an imposing muscular figure at six feet tall and over 200 pounds. Details of Mary's early life are scarce, but at some point she formed an unlikely lifelong friendship with Sarah Teresa Dunn, a relative of her master who was as delicate and refined as Mary was sturdy and fierce. In 1865, with the passing of the 13th Amendment and the abolishment of slavery, 33-year-old Mary became a free woman. For a number of years, she found employment aboard the steamboat Robert E. Lee until she fortuitously met her old master, Edmund Dunn, who informed her that her old friend Sarah had joined an Ursuline convent in Toledo, Ohio. Without hesitation, Mary packed up her belongings and travelled north to join her friend. For around the next 15 years, she dedicated herself to her work at the convent, for which she received a room, meals and $50 a year. She took great pride in the convent garden, leading one nun to famously remark, God help anyone who walked on the lawn after Mary had cut it. In 1884, Sarah Dunn, by then known as Mother Amadeus, was sent to Montana Territory to establish a school for Native American girls at St. Peter's Mission west of Cascade. A year later, upon learning her friend was perilously ill, a 52-year-old Mary braved a colossal 1,600-mile journey westward alone to nurse her back to health. Arriving in Cascade in 1885, she was the first African-American woman to ever set foot in the small town. After nursing Mother Amadeus back to health, she spent the next eight years building the mission a convent, three stone buildings and a church. Refusing the assistance of men, she would carry immensely heavy loads of lumber and stone on her back. When construction of the mission was complete, Mary settled there with the sisters and began hauling freight on a stagecoach for a living. During her time in Cascade, Mary earned herself a striking reputation as the terror of the countryside. As an ex-slave and a woman who drank whiskey, swore and carried a six-shooter pistol, Mary was an enigma to the locals. Men often learnt to respect her the hard way. One man who had offended her was pelted with rocks until he cried. Another she challenged to a duel and shot so close to his head that he immediately conceded and never spoke to her again. The Great Falls Examiner reported that Mary broke more noses than any other person in central Montana. This unladylike behaviour caught the attention of the mission's bishop, who exiled Mary from the convent she single-handedly built. She then briefly opened a restaurant, but her generous nature of serving food whether people could pay or not meant she was forced to close. Upon hearing of her friend's financial difficulty, Mother Amadeus secured Mary a position as a US Postal Service carrier. Delivering mail in the Wild West carried immense risks and involved long, arduous horseback journeys through hostile territories. A successful delivery was valued higher than the life of the driver. A popular saying among postal service workers of the time was that the horse and rider should perish before the mail. Out of all the applicants for the job, Mary, a woman in her 60s, hitched a team of six horses faster than men half her age. Upon her hiring, she became only the second female and the first African-American female male carrier in the history of the Western United States. Her route was a 19-mile stagecoach journey between Cascade and St. Peter's Mission, allowing her to return daily to the place she was exiled from. Stagecoach Mary never missed a day of work, and when the snow was too deep for her horses, she would strap the mailbags to her back and deliver them on foot wearing snowshoes. In her 10-year service, she went from an outsider to Cascade's most respected citizen. In her early 70s, Mary retired from the postal service and settled in Cascade. She opened a small laundry business that was sadly devastated by a fire. The residents of Cascade, remembering the generosity of her restaurant days, rushed to her aid donating whatever they could, from shelter to food and clothing. 
When Montana passed a law forbidding women from entering drinking establishments, the mayor of Cascade, D.W. Monroe, gave Mary special permission to drink in the saloon, where she would spend hours discussing politics and sports. She particularly enjoyed baseball and was invited by the Cascade baseball team to travel the state with them, attending all their games as their guest of honour. Not knowing her true date of birth, Mary chose to observe a birthday twice a year, whenever she felt like it, and on these days the schools of Cascade were closed for the celebrations. Mary died on the 5th of December 1914 of a severe case of edema. After her death, both local papers published her obituary on the front page, and her funeral was the largest in the town's history. Until her death, and for some 40 years after, she was the only African American to have ever resided in Cascade. She was laid to rest along her old postal route just outside St. Peter's Mission. Mary was a quintessential example of the expanding roles of women on the frontier. Not only did she overcome the challenges of asserting herself in a male-dominated world, she defied racial prejudice and became a valued and beloved member of her community. That is why she is one of our favourite Weird Wonderful Women. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share and subscribe, and thanks for stopping by Weird Wonderful Women, the channel dedicated to all those weird and wonderful ladies who dare to be different.